Today we are discussing alcohol, one of the most commonly consumed substances on the planet Earth. We are of course going to discuss the effects of alcohol on our biology, ranging from its effects on individual cells, on organs and organ systems in our brain and body. We are also going to discuss the effects of the effects of alcohol. That is what being inebriated really does to our thinking and our behavior and how it does it. And we are going to address what seems to be one of the more common questions out there, which is whether or not low to moderate amounts of drinking are better for our health than zero alcohol consumption at all. So this is just terrible, right? I mean, so you take in something that disrupts two systems, the gut microbiota, and it disrupts in two ways. It's killing the good gut microbiota, and it's allowing the bad bacteria to move from the gut into the bloodstream. You've also got pro-inflammatory cytokines coming from the liver, and those converge or arrive in the brain and create a system in which the neural circuits cause more drinking. That's a bad situation. And this is why people who drink regularly, even if it's not a ton of alcohol, again, of the sorts of patterns of drinking I talked about before, and certainly for those that are chronic heavy drinkers, what you end up with is a situation in which you have inflammation in multiple places in the brain and body and the desire to drink even more and to further exacerbate that inflammation and the gut leakiness. What we're talking about is that for every 10 grams of alcohol consumed, so that's one beer in the US, maybe a little bit more than one beer in Japan, or basically a third of a drink in Russia, there's a four to 13% increase in risk of pretty outrageous, right? And you might think, wait, how could it be that, you know, this stuff is even legal? Well, look, it's, as I described before, it's a toxin. It's also a toxin that people enjoy the effects of. And the place where it does that is within the liver and cells within the liver are very good at this conversion process, but they are cells and they are exposed to the acetylaldehyde in the conversion process. And so cells within the liver really take a beating in the alcohol metabolism events. So the key thing to understand here is that when you ingest alcohol, you are, yes, ingesting a poison and that poison is converted into an even worse poison in your body. And some percentage of that worse poison is converted into a form of calories that you can use to generate energy, generate ATP. And the reason why alcohol is considered empty calories is because that entire process is very metabolically costly, but there's no real nutritive value of the calories that it creates. You can use it for immediate energy, but it can't be stored in any kind of meaningful or beneficial way. Again, chronic drinking doesn't necessarily mean every day and every night. It could be the person that simply drinks every Thursday or every Friday, or just once a week has three or four drinks, or maybe even a few more. That person is going to experience a decrease in this top-down inhibition. So an increase in impulsivity and habitual behavior because the break on those behaviors has been removed while they're drinking, but also changes in the very neural circuits that allow habitual and impulsive behavior to occur more readily even when they're not drinking. 